Hi there friends of Surge and modular synthesis in general. In this video we're going to look at how to make a melody generator or a um, baseline generator out of a filter, which sounds like a tall order, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, the filter we're going to use for this is the variable Q filter, the VCFQ, from the Surge series, which has been around in different forms since the 1970s. And it's a really nice filter. It has uh, four outputs, bandpass output, it has a Q control here, more or less Q. It has a low pass output. It has high pass output. And it has notch. And they're all useful for what we're going to do in this video. Um, so we're going to uh, use this uh, filter in um, low frequency mode, that's to say sub audio mode. Uh, this filter has two modes and it also has a trigger input which means it can be pinged that's to say you can get a resonance out of it. If we take a um, a running clock from somewhere and put it into the trigger input and uh, turn up the Q we should be able to we have to have some out output of course you can hear that it's been pinged and this Q control with more Q the resonance is longer and with less Q the resonance is shorter and this is also true in the sub audio domain too so we're going to use this uh, pinging effect to get our sequence out so we'll take a, a new timbral oscillator which we're going to listen to um, I'll use the variable output here and I'll get rid of this voltage control from there and uh, I'm going to now use the voltage from the bandpass and I'm going to put it into control my new timbral oscillator at the variable of uh, control voltage input. Um, I'm going to ping the uh, filter on every eighth beat. So the thing to do is now to get the clocks right. I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, use a running clock from a MIDI interface. So this is a kind of MIDI uh, um, time clock and uh, it's going to come into the sequencer so I put it into the clock of the sequencer and I'm going to use the sequencer to divide the clock up by eight so every eighth beat I'll get a, a clock out of it I'm going to do that by taking the ninth reset output or pulse output from the sequencer and put it into the reset and I'm going to run the sequencer only for the first eight beats and this is going to be my um, my pulse that I'm going to uh, clock the or ping the filter with. I'll put that in there, ping the filter with it, put the filter into low frequency mode and now we should hear that the filter is making some kind of pretty wild excursions and the nature of the excursions depends on um, how much Q there is here and the frequency. The, the excursions will be faster when the frequency is higher and they'll be longer and more uh, regular uh, if the Q is higher. If the Q is lower we get this whoop 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 which is a kind of sign that there's a big excursion at the beginning and it gets smaller as the uh, sequence goes on. If we want to hear how that synchronizes with the uh, the ping synchronizes with the sequence I could just put a, a, a kick drum at the beginning of the, 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 this kick is now synchronous with 
the uh, with the ping you can hear that the excursion is synchronous with the kick drum which is synchronous with the ping so uh, the next stage is to take this uh, excursion that's moving around in an interesting way and put it through the step generator put it into the step generator we're going to sample it we take it out of the step generator and put it back into the control of the oscillator and we've got to sample the the step generator for every step so we'll put this clock that's running in coming in from our MIDI interface to uh, cause these steps and now we have a new note a new pitch on every uh, every step and we have the ping which is synchronized with the beat um, so again we can turn the the queue up and that causes the excursion to be wider and also more steady and then we can change the frequency of the filter to be slower and then we only get one curve or if we have it higher we get many curves and the of course the amount of excursion coming into uh, the oscillator depends on how high this um, voltage control knob is. If we were to put it into the one volt per octave it would be quite enormous. Could be interesting, but anyway, here we have more control. So we can uh, of course use the clock that's running to give a little beat there. And basically, by turning these two knobs, we change the character of the, the melody. It's really as simple as that. Um, of course, it's not tuned to any particular scale. We can, uh, if we want the melody to be higher, of course, we can raise the pitch of the oscillator. If we want it to be wider, we can uh, increase the voltage, but it's not in tune to anything. If we wanted it to be in tune, then we'd have to take the output uh, that's going to control the oscillator into a quantizer. Um, but it's not wise to do that straight into the quantizer because the excursion is going on both sides of uh, zero volts, so it's a bipolar excursion. So it's best to put that into uh, a processor that will raise the voltage to, uh, to be a more around. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking the output of the stepped generator into a dual processor, raising the voltage, and I'm putting it into the um, into the quantizer and then I'm using the quantizer of course I'll go into one volt per octave now and then of course if I want to have a lower Now I have the same kind of effects here, but they are um, tuned to, in this case, a uh, harmonic minor scale.
So as an epilogue to this video, we should say that the, all the outputs of the variable Q filter can be used uh, for these uh, melodic effects. We've got the band pass, the high pass, and the low pass, and they're all kind of in synchronism with one another, so you can use them for different oscillators if you want. Um, but the the notch will have a very, very much smaller ambitus. Uh, so if you want to use the notch, it's not really going to work very well through the um, through the quantizer. Uh, but you could probably get uh, more ambitus if you bypass the quantizer and uh, took it straight into the variable input. It kind of goes a very small excursion. So that's uh, not perhaps as useful as the other three outputs. So, anyway, nice, something nice to experiment with. I hope you enjoy it. Bye for now.